Hello, everyone. I'm R. Blank, and welcome to another episode of the Healthier Tech Podcast, the podcast about creating a healthier balance with modern technology. Today, we're welcoming Arumas Yodka, or AJ for short, to the podcast. AJ is a health and human performance expert. He's an educator, speaker, and coach who's helped hundreds of his clients excel in life physically and mentally. I have a few approaches, actually. Some of them are super simple, where I just do not touch my phone and don't turn it on, or any technology for that matter, until at least 12 p.m. Usually, I do it until 2, and just spend all morning meditating. However, uh, whatever that looks like to you, I actually personally practice Vipassana meditation, and I just allow myself to unplug. AJ's lessons have been featured in GQ and the Wall Street Journal, among other media outlets. He also works at the Istana Retreat in Bali, Indonesia, to help his clientele optimize their health, well-being, and quality of life. And today I'll be talking to AJ about the role of technology and its absence in human optimization in the experience of a detox retreat. Before we begin, a brief word. This podcast is brought to you by my company, Shield Your Body, where it is our mission to help make technology safer for you and your loved ones to enjoy. Inspired by the life's work of my father, Dr. Martin Blank, one of the world's leading EMF scientists, I founded Shield Your Body in 2012, and we provide a ton of great and free resources for you to learn all about EMF radiation, like articles, eBooks, webinars, and videos. And we also have a world-class catalog of laboratory-tested EMF and 5G protection products. From our phone pouch and laptop pad, all the way up to our bed canopy. All of our products are laboratory tested and include a lifetime warranty. Learn more about our products and why we have hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers around the world at shieldyourbody.com. That's shieldyourbody, all one word, dot com, or click the link in the show notes and use promo code POD to save 15% on your first order with free shipping throughout North America, the UK, and Europe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. I'm really, really glad we could make this work from uh, halfway around the world. <laughs> so... Um, jumping right in, I understand that your your current journey began when you considered enlisting to serve in Afghanistan. Is that is that right? Yeah, that is that is actually accurate. Yeah, I don't, so I don't talk about that much, honestly. But uh, that's something that's something. Yeah, that, that was a consideration. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I saw you uh, talk about it in another interview. Um, but maybe then you, we can start off by um, telling us about how you got started on this journey. Mm. So ultimately, everything happened organically, to be honest with you. It just, everything evolved uh, step by step because I had to solve my own own issues for that matter. So the whole evolution of a human, kind of where the whole uh, approach of what does it mean to be an optimized human? Because we, we tend to focus on mastering our career. We tend to focus on mastering something out, outside of ourselves, but we forget that we're on this human experience. And uh, I was constantly pondering, what does it mean to be an optimized human? Which areas do we have to address? So um, in the in the beginning, I just did that all unconsciously and kind of let um, so the society, the conditioning, whatever else were, that, that was driving me, I was at, at effect ultimately of everything that was going around. Um, and slowly but surely, I realized that, hey, this is not the way. And if we, if I keep going in that direction, um, I had gentle reminders from my body, from my environment, from different things that I'm going to end up in in a crappy place, quite frankly. So that's how my journey ultimately started. Uh, I realized, hey, if, if I don't take care of it, nobody else will. And that's that was the beginning of that really a light bulb moment of... Hey, I have to take ownership. I have to take ownership of whatever happens and however it happens. And if uh, if I start blaming or uh, blaming anyone else or actually looking for scapegoats or what have you, it's it's just I'm just shooting myself in the foot because I still have to deal with the situation at hand. So that would be like a big thirty thousand foot view of how my journey started. No, that I, I like that. I like that the take ownership because at the end of the day, you're the one who has to live with you. So taking ownership mm. really makes a lot of, so, but is there, is there, um, I mean, what, what you, you started out with the question of what, what does it mean to be an optimized human mm. and what does it mean to be an optimized human? Well, to be an optimized human, we ultimately are living different experiences, right? So first of all is our physical body, our biology and our meat suit that is carrying us through life. So uh, having that taken care of is one piece of the equation. Another one is your emotional regulation, because when you think about it, 
like people don't not perform because they're um, because they're not if they're not able to. They just have all these emotional blockages and mental blockages. So uh, those are kind of intertwined. Uh, so we have to take care of the physical, obviously, to clear the path where our bodies are capable. Then we're going to our mental capacity um, and then is going to into emotional. So all of us are capable. The thing is, we have so many interferences uh, in in our lives on, on a day-to-day basis that we actually get get stuck because of that. And um, finally, then we, uh, when we realize that, okay, this whole emotional thing is sorted, physical stuff is sorted, mental stuff is sorted, what's beyond that? Every person is looking for that higher purpose. And that's where spirituality comes in. And it's a different, you know, everybody has a different definition. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, I used to uh, really uh, tie spirituality to religion where and that's completely not the case it's like this conversation that we're having right now can be a spiritual experience for the listeners out there it's a spiritual experience of you actually being in the present moment right now as cliche as that sounds and actually absorbing the the words and being not distracted with anything else but i mean probably you're driving right now i'm guessing but it's like not distracting with anything else but driving and listening to what we're talking about so that's a that's a spiritual experience, uh, and it can it can be anything. So ultimately, those four areas, um, when they're taken care of, that's what makes us an optimized human. We're living a full optimized human experience. So, uh, that and your company right is called Human Optimized. So this is this really is the the core focus of of. The work you've been doing for mm-hmm. for, for several years. So I have a few companies. Uh, that one was my is my personal, and another one is Yogi Lab, which is ultimately about experimentation of our human existence. So Yogi in a it's the, the logo of it is Yogi in a flask. So we're experimenting with uh, ancient techniques and ourselves, our bodies, our minds, and then reporting to the rest of the world what worked. So that's that's ultimately experimentation and just trying things out has been a massive part of my life because I, I ultimately, um, I was born prematurely, I had kidney stones when I was 13 years old and, uh, had a heart condition. I just kind of got into this world with a lot of, you know, started in the negative and then had to figure out, okay, how do I get myself out of this mess or at least alive, you know? Uh, so, uh, that <laughs> kind of led me into exper- experimenting quite a bit and unpacking layers and layers and layers, which, and we start on the surface level, all of us do. So uh, biology and the physical human body was the first step for me. And then I got into mental health. I got into emotional health and regulation. And then spirituality found me because I was like, okay, I have other boxes somewhat checked. I'm, uh, I either master them or I'm very comfortable with them. What's next? What's next? What's next? And I kept asking that question and it just led me uh, layers deeper and deeper and deeper. And <laughs> here we are. It's never ending. It's never ending. No, that I would, I like, I like hearing about this because it, it, it's clear that the system, your system came from just your, your own personal need and your own personal journey. And, right. uh, I, I find that, I find that really inspiring. And I want to get into a little, uh, a little bit later into how, how it is you, you, you work with people, how it is you convey this system to other people mm-hmm. to, to help optimize their health. One thing though, that, that, that I found very interesting in in uh, what I read about your approach is something called the minimal effective dose. Is that is that right? Could you could you could you talk yes. a little bit about that? Yes, exactly that. You see, it's just so easy to overthrow your lifestyle with anything. Like all of us have a set lifestyle. We are habits of uh, or creature creatures of habits. So we either have habits that are driving us forward or holding us back. So we can use them for our advantage or for our detriment. And uh, most of us, unfortunately, have structured our, li- our lives in a way that that habitual nature of human animal is actually is actually not beneficial for us. So when it comes to minimal effective dose right now to reverse everything. So to reverse that, we first of all have to consciously identify that, hey, this is not working. And then we probably have some subconscious blocks that, uh, that is leading us to this. And uh, the, however, right now we're approaching our lives, subconsciously it's it's serving us in some shape or form or another. It's like it was self-sabotage, for example, for example, when people say, uh, I, I don't want to hurt myself, but you do because you are doing that, you know? So it's, it's there is something that this twisted kink 
that is driving us to hurt ourselves. Uh, so minimal effective dose is ultimately allowing you to pinpoint the very levers that are going to move move you forward in the most efficient and straightforward manner. Because we uh, we tend to you know overthrow our lifestyles with fitness or emotional health, mental health, what have you, and just kind of immerse ourselves into that. And then when we come out, we just drop everything, we go back to to where we started. So integrating that into your life, it requires that minimal effective dose because we're very few of us are able to overthrow it for the rest of our lives. We have uh, families, uh, jobs, all that kind of just full pile of, of things to do, of, of fortunately or unfortunately for some of us. And uh, we can't just overthrow, you know, start going to the gym for three hours a day to lose 100 pounds that we've gained in the, in the past two decades. So uh, the most a sustainable approach really is to actually take it step by step where, okay, what is it that I want to change? What is that minimal effective dose approach that I'm going to, I'm going to actually sustain for the rest of my life. And that's when you do it. Because if you, right now, if you're, if it's not going to be there for the rest of your life, why do it in the first place? Yeah, no. So the least amount of change is the change that you're going to be most likely to maintain. Yeah, that the changes that you maintain exactly. are the ones that are actually going to help you. There you go. Yeah, there you no, go. I like that. You summarized it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess slightly off topic, I used to be in um, uh, software development, and okay. the minimal effective dose approach reminds me a lot about something called MVP or minimal uh, minimal viable, viable product. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I found, <clears throat> pardon me, to be a. Uh, a re- really effective way of, of getting complex software projects done. Absolutely. Um, you just you just get something out there because yeah. uh, you know how many people are actually researching, uh, you know, the, the best shoe that they want to buy before they actually start hitting the pavement. I, <laughs> you, 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 don't have the best shoe. you don't need the best shoe. Just put some shoes on and start start running. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, totally. Hmm. Um, so, so the theme this season—I mean, it's the Healthier Tech Podcast. It's all about, it's all about uh, building a healthier relationship with technology. And the theme mm-hmm. this season, um, and uh, thank you again for 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 coming on to participate. The theme this season is is disconnecting, disconnecting from technology. And I heard you talk about quiet Saturdays as a great way to get started on improvement. Is that is that still a habit that you maintain? Yes, absolutely. Quiet Saturdays or Sundays. I pick one of the mornings. And right now they they uh, they vary. Sometimes I have stuff going on on a Saturday morning, so I move it to Sunday. Sometimes I just take uh, um, an afternoon off on on Sunday. So it it just it's a variation of it, but it's it happens nine weekends out of ten. So um, I have a few approaches actually. Some of them are super simple, where I just do not touch my phone and don't turn it on or any technology for that matter until at least twelve p.m. Usually. I do it until two and just spend all morning meditating. However, uh, whatever that looks like to you, I actually personally practice Vipassana meditation and I just allow myself to unplug. Another uh, approach right now that I have access to, uh, fortunately, at um, at this amazing retreat center um, and like a cliffside resort that is just brilliant and fulfills all of my needs, honestly, <laughs> uh, it, um, it has a flotation tank. So I close myself off for f- three to five hours in the wow. sensory deprivation tank and I just float. I, I just completely turn off my nervous system because we are so dysregulated when it comes to uh, our central nervous system. And what do, I, what do I mean by that is that we constantly charge our nervous system. And it's, it, you can imagine that, that as a sliding scale. So uh, you probably heard about fight or flight and rest and digest, your, your uh, parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system. Uh, the thing is that, that there is a misunderstanding that we, it's, it's okay to be in a, in a sympathetic state. It's okay to be in that fly, fight or flight mode. However, the chronic exposure to that state is, that is what actually is hurting us. So uh, in order for us to actually put that sliding scale somewhere in the middle and rebalance ourselves... That's what's necessary for our nervous system to complete to to uh, devoid itself of any stimulation for at least a few hours a week. That's I mean uh, that's the bare 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 minimum because knowing how much we overcharge and to, uh, put our systems into overdrive where we're scrolling 
on our phones b- before bed and pick our phones first thing in the morning, that's that's horrible. You're stimulating yourself from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. And I mean, you can only imagine, you, you see mental health issues being rampant and, um, and stress and depression. That's one of the contributors is that sim- overstimulation and exposure to that simulation 24-7. That, um, I, and I definitely want to continue that thread because that mm-hmm. I think that's fantastic. Uh, I, I just want to comment. I, I've, my, uh, my brother had a float tank. I used to float. And three to five hours sounds like a really long session to me. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that like at, at, at your uh, at, at Istana, which we'll talk about at your retreat, which we'll talk about? Yeah. Is that kind of like the mm-hmm. session length that you recommend? Or no, actually, uh, for most people, for most people, honestly, uh, it's sixty to ninety minutes are going to okay. do wonders. And uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just more har- hardcore when it comes to those things because simply because uh, I do know how much I overcharge my system throughout the week. And when I have uh, when I have seasons, for example, where I have you know twelve to sixteen hour days for for a period of time, I've, the only thing that I I want after that is just to not not talk to anyone and to just have as little um, interaction or or stimulation as possible. And what's a better way to do that than floating? You can't bring your phone there. You can't talk to anyone. It's just you and yourself. That's it. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, those are very powerful devices. I, I totally agree. Um, I also read uh, or heard that you have you use a kill switch for your in-home uh, tech. Is is do you, is that right? Did I get that right? Or yes, yeah. correct. And so you, and that's actually for for other reasons. That's not, that's one of the the products that we recommend at my company. Um, is how what what uh, why can can you speak to? I mean, so you have your quiet Saturdays, you, you work mm-hmm. to disconnect. How is it that you use this, this kill switch or multiple, depending, I guess, depending on the rooms, how right. is it that you make use of those in your regimen? Ultimately, it just, uh, it just turns off uh, the, the Wi-Fi at a certain hour. It just automatically shuts it off. So first of all, you're not getting non-native um, electromagnetic fields exposure to that. Uh, which we don't want when we sleep. And I actually measured that um, when I lived back in Bangkok. Um, and I simply, just one change. I literally ate the same thing for uh, for six days. I did the same thing for six days. And I did three days with Wi-Fi on and three days without Wi-Fi. And um, my aura ring, which probably a lot of uh, people listening right now, they're familiar with, it's a tracking device, um, a little health tracking device with, that tracks your sleep. My deep sleep was 15 minutes longer in average in those three days that I, I had no Wi-Fi on. Everything else was, was pretty much the same. So it was fascinating for me to see such a drastic, pretty significant change, honestly. 15 minutes of deep sleep is a pretty significant change. Yeah, no, that's... And turning off your Wi-Fi at night is, uh, is, 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 is one of the top recommendations that we make also at my company. Um, and that it's great to have the it's great to have those uh actual hard data um that that, mm-hmm. that you're getting um is the kill switch just for your wi-fi or 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 do you use it do you use it just to depower like multiple devices or d- exactly of, okay. just to depower multiple devices because um other than that i, I have pretty regular sleeping routines i mean uh, i do enjoy weirdly enough i do enjoy reading things on my phone i do not really uh engage in physical books uh, anymore for some reason uh, it just kind of got used to it uh, quite frankly and uh it's more it, it's just more convenient to store everything in, in one place because i read quite a bit so it's 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 more it's more handy for me uh, how, uh, however i just flip my phone into airplane mode and it just becomes a reading device and that's it so it it, it comes to it comes to ha- habit and really discipline uh when it comes to that but it's it's pretty at, at this point i'm kind of yeah uh, it's 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 become automatic no it it's really great to hear cuz I, I i wasn't sure you know going into this interview it's really great to hear how mm-hmm. uh management of your of your of your emf exposure is such an important part of uh oh, your human optimization regimen that's that's huge that's huge it's such an underestimated thing and plus uh, i i notice how sensitive i am to my environment uh once you get into a, I guess deeper meditative states and and um, other things where you just expose yourself into 
or just become more internally aware, you realize how many things are actually messing with your with your head and throwing you off balance. So when it comes to yeah, wearing uh, earbuds and stuff like that, they are convenient. Uh, the wireless earbuds they are convenient, but I, uh, I only only use them when I'm uh, when I'm driving. So it's like to minimize that exposure to pretty much maximum. Uh, but it's it's a big it's a big thing. So. So, you know, it, it's funny you mentioned an aura ring. I guess it's not funny. It, like you say, a lot of people are using it, but I'm often asked about these because I, I, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm a strong advocate for minimizing exposure to EMF radiation. And uh, I'm very vocal about uh, not using uh, wearable technology, like you mentioned AirPods. Mm -hmm. And so I, one thing I, I wanted to get from, from you, because you, you, you are an advocate and a practitioner of reducing your exposure, but you right. also use technology, specific pieces of technology for specific uses, um, in your human optimization regimen. So how can you speak a little bit to the value of detoxing from technology versus the role of technology in managing detox and human optimization? Did, did I that's get that point question. across? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question, but it's a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is a really good one that. Uh, one of the one of the things actually that I that I tend to gravitate towards is to really simplification. That's why minimal effective dose is such a foundational thing of everything that I do, is because once we start overcomplicating things, I'll I'll be honest with you. It's like um, nine ninety nine people out of a hundred would just basic recommendation. If they just stick to the basics, they're gonna be they're just gonna be better off than than the rest of the population. Uh, all the all of the high tech optimization stuff is becoming more and more sexy, but quite frankly, it is unnecessary. You know, biohacking. I'm a huge proponent of biohacking in different uh, different um, approaches. However, how can you hack a computer that is turned off? And most of our biologies, most of our bodies are actually not not even powered yet. So you cannot hack it <laughs> until it's actually on. And connected to the internet, right? <laughs> so, uh, so that's one of the things that that I'm really, I'm really uh, conscious of that to not overload people with all these uh, all these these technological bits. So, uh, if the technology technology is like all, smart watches, smart everything, the reality is that it's making us more and more stupid in a lot of these cases. So, uh, I do use it quite extensively. So for example, yeah, I have an O-ring. Um, I have like a polar device, my chest strap when I uh, want to use to train uh, more specifically and actually would like to measure my heart rate variability more accurately and uh, more, more accurate heart rate, all that kind of stuff. For example, um, I use Newcom device. Uh, that's that's technology. That's a pretty advanced technology. Uh, I use all these kind of uh, biohacks uh, and just... Quite, quite a few, quite a few things here and there. However, I wouldn't replace them if I didn't take care of the basics, the fundamentals of my biology, uh, where it's sleep optimization, stress management, nutrition, movement, my environmental uh, toxicity, and my my mental health. I wouldn't even bother uh, to even consider those. You know, if, for example, O-ring is such a simple, simple device that if you're not sleeping well, it's going to give you um, good data on okay the adjustments to make. So if that's going to drive you forward, it's going to, if it's going to make you make um, behavioral adjustments, that's great. But if it's not, then just drop it, just lose it. So quite frankly, uh, the point of the whole thing is I kind of uh, went on a, on a roll a little bit is yeah, great. if it's stop, if it's overcomplicated, if it's uh, making your life harder, just drop it, lose it. Uh, if it's actually helping you and it, the data, collect the data, if you're not using it, it's absolutely useless. You can collect as much data as possible if you're not making decisions based on that. Like, uh, you, for example, on software, the so software's Google Analytics offer thousands of pieces of data. It's there. It's great. But if you're not using it, what's the point? You know. So that's that's the same thing with with the human body uh, as well. Is that if you were not making adjustments, if it's not driving us to change, it's useless. So, um, the, like things, for example, like continuous glucose monitor. I wear that a few weeks every year to kind of see the adjustments of my of how I react to certain foods. I, I'm just curious, honestly. So having so, something 
uh, with NFC reading capacity um, and a needle stuck in my arm for a few weeks, I'm fine with that. You know, because of uh, for the sake of data that I'm going to actually act upon, I'm fine with that. If I wasn't uh, doing anything about it, about the data that I collected, well, I just simply wouldn't use it. No, I I I I I, pre- I, I really appreciate that that kind of approach. I, I often talk mm-hmm. about um, because I, with, with the exception of certain technologies uh, like mm-hmm. AirPods, which I'm very strongly against. Um, mm. I, I, when it comes to wearables, people ask me, you know, because of the EMF concerns, should, should they, shouldn't they? And I always recommend engaging in a cost benefit analysis. Right. Um, and it sounds like that's exactly what, what, what you're talking Precisely. about. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, if, I, like yeah, some on. actionable, excuse, uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. No. Um, some actionable, uh, steps for, for most people. It's like if you're not turning off your, your phone or not flipping it into airplane mode when you're going to bed, you don't have to worry about, about any EMF exposure uh, beyond that. It's like that's, that's the first step. So there, there are layers to it. So every single uh, subject, there are layers to it. And uh, for most of us, if we cover just 90% of that, you don't need extra biohacks or any of that nonsense. So that's, that's the ultimate point. Yeah. And not carrying your phone in your pocket. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, I could, uh, this is, this is great. I would love to talk to you like a lot longer just on, on this specific set of questions, but I want to mm-hmm. move on into Istana, um, which is the, the, did I, and did I say that correctly? Is that? The, yeah. Istana. Yeah. That's, Istana, it, that's it. Which, which is the retreat that you run in Bali. And it, it sounds pretty amazing. I've seen photos, uh, videos, um, Unfortunately, I, I did not have the time or budget to to go research in person before this episode. Not uh, yet. Can, <laughs> can can you uh, you know talk a little bit about Istana and all, and mm-hmm. what made you create this refuge? Mm-hmm. So Istana is uh, ultimately actually I did not create it. It was my business partner's um, idea, and it's it's his baby. It's just something that I discovered uh, about three years ago. And I simply, that was, that was the place that checked all the boxes for me because it has, uh, ultimately it's a cliffside retreat center and um, where we run, so I ran my high performance retreat there. We run uh, Vipassana silent meditation retreats there and biohacking events, all kinds of stuff. So, um, and it, it just, it, it's, it's created to perfection, quite frankly. I mean, it has a cryotherapy chamber that I am a pretty much a daily visitor of. Uh, sensor deprivation tanks, um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Uh, then we have cold and hot plunges, infrared sauna, beautiful steam room, and uh, dry sauna as well. So it's it's just one of those wellness places where I, I'm I honestly uh, for the past two years during this um, pandemic <laughs> that is happening right now, I pretty much have not left that place. So it was I was I was there pretty much on a daily basis from sunrise to sunset. <laughs> It really, it really kept me, uh, kept me in, in Bali and uh, just healthy and I, mean, hell, I guess healthier than I've, I've ever been because I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to move from, uh, to, to go to conferences or, uh, you know, fly too much. So it was, it's definitely, it's definitely a, a retreat that I, I it's a dream. If you're trying to get away, if you're trying to reset, it's, it's a dream of a destination. That's yeah, for sure. no, I, I can, I can certainly, uh, imagine worse places to spend the pandemic than <laughs> <laughs> a paradise sure. refuge. <laughs> sure. Um, so what, what kind of people, and I, I don't know if this, I mean, I know you've been there during the pandemic. I don't know if it's still been operating, uh, but in mm-hmm. general, what, what kind of people attend, what, what make, make the journey? So we have, uh, it depends, depends on which event, to be honest, because we have uh, quite a few things going on. Uh, the local community, local health community, every single person knows about Astana. <laughs> Everybody really speaks so highly of it because, first of all, it's the views are incredible. The sunset while you're, you know, uh, just soaking, <laughs> soaking in a, in a uh, hot plunge or, or, a little, or a little cold pool. To, to distract yourself from the pain that you're feeling. It's like the sunsets are great. <laughs> so uh, so it's ultimately uh, the every single person who makes it there, uh, they, they want to come back. It's without, without uh, hesitation. That's, that's how I was. You see, and three years later, I, I still haven't left. <laughs> so so that's, that, that definitely attracts uh, the 
from people who have never heard of any of the biohacks and stuff like that to really health nuts who are looking to dive deeper and, and optimize properly. So that's one of the things, one of the events that I was running was a high performance retreat where it's a, uh, my colleague, uh, who's a functional medicine practitioner, we we just dive deep into each each areas of biology. Honestly, so uh, we go to one day to optimize sleep, another day to um, optimize stress management, nutrition, movement, environment, and mental health. So, a six day retreat where each day would go deep into each of the topics, unpack them completely, make them incredibly actionable, and they would be integrated and sprinkled throughout the day uh, for that experience. Um, and another thing is just uh, even to try out uh, a cryotherapy chamber, which is negative 170 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> for to, to be there for three minutes. It's, a, it's just an incredible experience uh, for someone who's never tried it. So uh, it's, it's, it ranges, but uh, as I said, some people just come for, for the views and they, then they come out and say, wow, okay, I can get, take care of my health here. <laughs> No, that. So, what, 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 what kind of range of pro, you mentioned specific programs? So, so there are different programs that are. What, what are those types of programs? Mm -hmm. So, some of them are, are just simply uh, people come there on a daily basis for a basic spa access. So they go into hot plunges. Uh, so hot plunges about forty two degrees Celsius. So it's it's not like a hot tub. Uh, not quite hot tub, but it's above that, so it's pretty much un pretty uncomfortable. So that that's to release heat shock proteins, and then we're going into into a cold plunge, which is for the opposite to create a cold shock proteins. So uh, as we know, they're amazing for your immune system. For uh, they're incredibly anti-inflammatory, and uh, we want to we want to generate them as often as possible. From uh, there are longitudinal studies. Uh, than in Finland uh, regarding saunas and, and heat shock proteins. So we know at this point that they contribute to longevity pretty significantly. Um, and uh, then there are sauna access, uh, access and just simple, simple facilities uh, for that. And uh, if you want to take the kind of boost it up a notch a little bit, then there is, as I said, cryotherapy, sensory deprivation tanks, and uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber and that's something if coupled with with a program on let's say you're looking to reduce inflammation uh you uh, you want to um create you want to make yourself less insulin resistant or, or what have you that's something that i tend to do myself uh because i enjoy humans who come uh, who come over and we put together a daily intensive program just deep dive into okay this is what you got Let's look at the data, look at what's happening in your body right now, experience these things uh, that are going to give you a good kickstart, and then we move on to, you see, it's just, uh, unless you live in the area, uh, quite frankly, uh, it is difficult to, uh, to maintain these practices. However, as I said, for 99% of the population, they don't need that fancy equipment. There are just daily practices that are going to help them reach the level uh, levels of optimal health so we want to simplify things as much as possible uh, so we start in a complex manner it's like you see what's possible what's out there it's like okay how are we going to apply this to your day to day so you, you you mentioned the daily practices so even people who come you know for 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 instance to your your high performance retreat which lasts mm -hmm. I, I guess like a week something like that right, right? And yep. so they only have access to these amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> really amazing sounding facilities uh for a week and in a, so but in addition to to making use of all of those uh great benefits you try right. to convey um the ongoing changes that they 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 need to to make to their lives right in exactly. order to maintain exactly. the benefit so mm -hmm. could you speak a little bit to to the uh, the uh, I guess the the changes that relate to healthier relationships with technology that that I mean because I mean I think everyone can kind of sense that you're you're kind of an intense guy and <laughs> you like you spend three to five hours in a float tank not sixty to ninety minutes so uh, so we've talked about some of the things that you do but what are the the minimal effective dose changes that you advise your clients to make when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. So unplugging is one of those things that is so difficult to do these days. But uh, one of the things that I just kind of uh, make make a non-negotiable when I work with people is, hey, 
at least for for an afternoon or for the whole morning just do not touch any technology grab a book uh get lost go for breakfast with your with your children without any technology at all whatsoever because first of all uh, just for presence <laughs> so we we were losing that uh, in human communication which is becoming more and more quite frankly uh, emotionally and relationally autistic because we're not we don't know how to relate with people anymore so that's that's a problematic uh, second of all is because of that constant simulation so to develop that better uh, better relationship with technology um, as i said if if i'm working intensely i'm exposed to right now we're we're on on a call right it's like i'm using the internet i'm doing all these things uh, so I want to make sure that I'm unplugging for a little bit and having zero simulation at all whatsoever, unless it's it's a stimulating book that I'm reading. Um, so uh, that's that's one of the things. Uh, as you mentioned, phone use and uh, carrying your phone around in airplane mode. That's it's like if it's in your pocket, it's either either shouldn't be in your pocket or it should be in airplane mode. Those are such simple shifts. Same thing uh, when you're going to bed. Turn off your Wi-Fi. Uh, just Turn off your phone, flip it into airplane mode. That's something that my my partner as well, just she's she's learned over you know uh, just after a few <laughs> times like of me mentioning or doing that for her. It's like why is my phone in airplane mode? It's because <laughs> because it's slowly killing you, dar- darling. <laughs> yeah, no, I have those same conversations with my significant other. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, that's it. and that's that's the thing. It's one of uh, one of such simple. Once I understand why. Uh, obviously, for people who are really interested, I dive into you know what reactive nitrogen species are and how they're more potent than reactive oxygen species and how they're damaging our DNA and all, all of that spiel. However, some of them are like, why would I do that? Like, well, because it's sapping your energy. You're gonna feel feel like shit faster if uh, as compared to if you didn't do that. It's like, oh, okay, that's that's understandable. You know, so everybody wants to feel better and everybody wants to feel more energized. So that's a simple way to put it. Uh, so that's ultimately uh, those simple little, little shifts. Uh, we just start there, and then okay, let's find uh, let's find the kill switch. That's again a one one time purchase on Amazon, and that's gonna sort you out. Uh, f- let's find this. Let's find that. Then we start adding things. But I kind of I kind of build it as in in this. You know, we start with a, fo- a foundation as we build a house. You know, kind of makes sense. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't been seeing many houses being built. You know, from uh, top down. So, you know, same thing with our lifestyle changes. We want we want to start with such simple fundamentals, um, the the few that I mentioned, and then see if people can actually implement them and check the boxes, and then go from there. So, uh, wow. I mean, that I love hearing everything that you're saying because it's it's the same kind of stuff um, that that we advocate um, all the Beautiful. time. And uh, mm-hmm. I, it, it's, it, it's, it's just so great to hear you talk about it, like uh, that you're, you're, you're working with your clients to, to implement these kinds of changes. And you've seen that these kinds of changes make big differences for people, right? That's right. That's right. And it's so, so funny, actually, seeing some people, for example, who um, I worked with quite a few executives uh, who just, they, they tell me, I haven't slept I can't fall asleep, uh, so it's it, it's it's actually makes me makes me giggle a little bit uh, because it's there's no such thing as not being able to sleep. It's just you know that that um, your central nervous system is so dysregulated that you're it's preventing you from doing it. Uh, so you know that a few adjustments like putting on blue light blocking glasses uh, when after like just within an hour of your bedtime and uh, stopping. To stimulate yourself at a certain hour in terms of any stimulants like nicotine, uh, caffeine, and uh, and other stuff, it's just those simple adjustments. Uh, th- people come back after literally three days of implementing them and say, "Hey, I slept for the first time in a decade." Can you imagine that? It's like in wow. a decade. So, and you you see how little effort those shifts actually make. It, just no extra time at all whatsoever. Just little adjustments that took. A few minutes to incorporate. Some of them are um, are just one-time things. Like, for example, on your uh, computer computer, if you have Iris software, right, that regulates the temperature of your screen, right. Uh, so most of the th- or a kill switch. That's one-time purchase that you can 
just get done and forget about. So, and then you see such massive shifts and changes, then they're like, wow, what, what else? What else? And the, <laughs> the, interesting, the interesting thing is that, uh, after that after that initial shift, everything becomes super incremental. Uh, so it's like uh, at, at some point you reach the, the you know the uh, concept of rate of diminishing returns. Uh, so you reach the point of diminishing returns where you're investing more time than you're getting out of it. For example, mm-hmm. hyperbaric oxygen chamber. I don't. I would not spend an hour or two there uh, if I if I wasn't able to work in it. You know, so I have my computer in it. I'm actually, I'm actually getting stuff done. My phone, my computer, all that stuff. So I'm getting stuff done in it. But it's if it was just me in it uh, for two hours, I, I wouldn't make that time investment. So it, and it's not uh, that's going back to integrating those activities into your lifestyle, not overthrowing your lifestyle with activities that ultimately have diminishing returns. So um, I would love to to keep talking with you about this, but you've, you've already been so generous with your time and I feel like I need some kind of excuse to (laughs) go to Bali. Um, so (laughs) I need you for sure. (laughs) Um, so where can, uh, people go? Where would you like people to go to learn more about you and connect with you? So human dot optimized on Instagram is a great place, uh, to connect with me. I do, uh, do more and more, uh, just personal development stuff uh, that, that uh, I'm diving diving deeper into. Uh, it's like I still I still consult uh, companies, people, uh, executives regarding high performance, uh, but that's something that I'm gravitating towards. My content is gravitating towards more personal development and, and uh, digging deeper into yourself. Uh, so yet you can find me, find me there. Um, and the Yogi lab is another one that, um, uh, that is, that is our company or that is geared towards personal development. And, and that's, that's yogi that, lab, yogilab.com. That, uh, that's yogilab.com. And that's yeah. ultimately everything that you would wish you learned at school. But, uh, <laughs> if they, they didn't teach you that because so many, uh, that's, I'm going to go on a quick, uh, rant regarding that is how our, educational system has become so devoid of usual useful experience, excuse me, uh, because we're not actually, we're getting pumped theory into our heads and we're not actually get to apply it. Not, not even in college, unfortunately. Whereas if you, the things like, for example, Tantra, breath work, nutrition, fitness, high performance, things like that, we if we're taught that we're going to be such happier, more capable human beings, because even uh, some people who are running running businesses sometimes they uh, until they realize that their business grows to the extent that they grow, and once uh, once they realize that, and once you realize that your career, your success, everything that you actually want is going to grow to to the level that you're growing as a person. So uh, you up leveling and looking for ways to to experiment and actually take yourself to the next level. It's, it's a never ending. Like, most people understand now that it's not a goal to retire. It's, it's a goal to actually find something that you, you really enjoy doing and you're going to fall in love with the repetitions and these never ending iterations of, of this beautiful human existence that we can turn into a massive experiment. I, I love that. I love that vision. Um, that's, <laughs> I, 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 I really, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, Thank you. AJ, this has been, this has been fantastic. This has been eye opening. Um, this conversation actually went in directions. I, I, I didn't think about in advance and I, I really appreciate you, uh, donating the time and sharing your insight and experience with my audience. So thank you so much for, for coming on the healthier tech podcast. Hey, thank you for ha- for having me. And uh, another w- another piece of the equation that, that I have not given to people uh, that is crucial, uh, actually. Uh, so I want to first of all thank you for having me, and it's been it's been such a great conversation. I just love uh, what you're about, and I see that we have so many intertwining interests and uh, and really philosophies that that we we live by. Uh, another thing that of to unpack yourself when it comes to a healthier uh, technology, for example, to watch a video on YouTube, you need technology, right? Or to watch a course, which I am going to recommend. It's absolutely free. Uh, it's called Vipassana, vipassanaonline.com. That's a 10-day retreat. 
that is silent meditation retreat. You can do full 10 days. You can do it, uh, 10 days in, um, in partial, like for six hours a day, two hours a day, what have you. Or if you want to start a bit more, uh, less hardcore, one day meditation challenge.com. So you are getting to unplug. You're getting to know your internal, uh, your internal structure and what's happening on the inside. And you get to master your mind because that's one of the first steps towards freedom from technology. So you become a master of technology and not a slave to it. So oh, that's I, I love that. what I would like to end so on. That, and you said that was vipassanaonline.com? Yes, and okay, one day well, meditation challenge.com. Uh, cool. So we'll get both of those and put those in the uh, in the show notes. Well, sure. um, thank you so much again, AJ. I really, uh, this was great. I loved it. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, as always, uh, I am joined by, here by my co-host Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie, that was a that was that, I really really liked that interview, and uh, I'm going to tell you why. But I, first, I'd like to hear what you think. What you think? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting, and you know, I, I really appreciate his that the, his take on uh, our mastery of uh, uh, like biohacking intertwines or intersects so much with what we say about, uh, you know, being more mindful with technology and not using it when you don't need it. And I really loved that he talked about uh, if you are collecting all this data, you're using all these devices to do something. And for he used the example of collecting data, if you're not actually doing anything with the data, don't use the device. I, I loved that, uh, that whole message uh, that he was he was uh, uh, talking about throughout the th- pretty much throughout the interview. Yeah, so I agree. Uh, the so it started with this discussion on the minimal effective dose, which mm-hmm. which I really liked. Uh, maybe there are other human optimization people out there who talk in those terms, but I haven't heard that because you, you 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 hear from these people and and AJ for for all the listeners. You really got to check out photos of this guy. He do, he he does not look like a guy who does anything minimally. Um, <laughs> <you know. laughs> and uh, for him to to talk in these terms about minimal effective dose, uh, in terms of changes that you can make that are of the scale that you can maintain, I think that was key. And then mm-hmm. at the end, when I asked him what is the minimal effective dose of ongoing digital detox, you know the changes he talked about are the same top changes we talk about at SYB all the time, except he can talk about them uh, from the perspective of of working with clients and seeing all the immediate and ongoing improvements to their quality of life that these simple changes bring. And that I thought was, it was just super powerful. Yeah. And I I think that 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 perspective is really excellent because I think oftentimes people, from what I've seen in some of our interactions with our customers and our audience, is that people start looking at EMF as a source, as a potential source for their discomfort or, or, or bad health when they're experiencing the bad health and they're at the last straw of what can I do to, to, to improve my health. And the, what I appreciate about what he's saying is, you know, these little things we can do now uh, uh, can help uh, shine the light on things. Well, oh, shoot. That was so good for a second. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, guys. Um, Pick it up. Yeah, I'm just thinking how to how I wanted to end that. James will clean it up. Yeah, no, I I know. I know I'm giving it, I'm giving them their work. Um, shoot. Uh, <laughs> hold on, it's Too coming. Okay. So I, <laughs> I appreciate the perspective of him working with people who are uh, already focusing on their health, not necessarily because they have uh, health issues they're trying to 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 conquer now. Yeah. Yeah, no, agreed. And I think part of what what I hear in what you're talking about is, you know, because because we hear from a lot of people who are worried about their their long term health risk from exposure to EMF radiation, and that is that is as you know, that's a serious concern. That's a valid concern. Um, I think people are less aware 
of the immediate benefits that they can have. Thank from, you. Yes. Yeah. From from making these types of changes. So by, for instance, just not carrying your phone in your pocket. Yes, you are improving uh, your long term health risk, but also you're going to start seeing benefits in the short term, um, and you just need to pay attention to see to see what those are. And I thought I thought that was really powerful. Another thing, and this this will be the last thing I say, um, is is this sort of relationship that, uh, that, that, that we're getting at in this season, um, uh, because, you know, we spend so much time talking about EMF exposure. Um, but EMF exposure is just one of the negative, uh, externalities or negative costs of engaging with technology. And AJ was able to kind of tie that all together where when you use your phone less, you're going to get less EMF exposure. You're also going to get less toxicity from Facebook and less of this uh, mm-hmm. tech addiction mechanism. And you're going to start seeing kind of bigger s- changes that are bigger in scope than just the impact of the EMF. And so it's the relationship with technology. Uh, I think AJ was really good at kind of explaining how this relationship with technology has these multiple negative uh, yeah, sets absolutely. of negative health effects. Absolutely. Yeah. On, the, on the emotional and mental side. So emotionally, obviously addiction uh, carries its problems. And then um, mental capacity was something that I thought was interesting uh, because these smartphones are, I believe he said, making us not as smart or less smart, which is true. You know, I think that's that's uh, an important part. And there was one other thing that he said, and kind of going back to EMF, <laughs> is uh, he was collecting data on his sleep and he turned off his, his Wi-Fi at night and got 15 minutes more of deep sleep each night. And I think the impact of sleep as well is so important. And we do talk about this a lot, but 15 minutes more of deep sleep, I think is uh, is critical to our health. Any additional minute we can get of deep sleep uh, helps our body repair and our mind repair. So I think that was, uh, to me, that was something that really stood out. Um, and I do love that he tied in the emotional part because we are seeing so many emo- the emotional impact, uh, especially on young people from social media, and yeah. um, we'll say technology addiction, but specifically social media addiction. And I don't think those that's going to get better um, unless we all start being more willing to disengage. Yeah, turn it off the off switch. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> Super powerful. Well, quiet that was- Saturday, quiet Sunday, a little bit Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I <laughs> 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 think you see where I'm going with that. <laughs> well, that was great. I um, and and thank you for sharing your thoughts on the on the episode, Steph. I I, I think we we're we're of the same mind. Uh, that was that was kind of that was just like a perfect episode for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that does it for today's episode. Remember, if you like this show and want to hear more, please subscribe. The Healthier Tech Podcast, available on all major podcasting platforms. And if you have a moment, please also leave a review. Reviews are really critical to help more people find this podcast and learn about the important and undercover topics that we discuss. Also, you can learn more and sign up for our mailing list to get notified when we have new interviews, webinars, ebooks, and sales at shieldyourbody.com. You can also just click that link in the show notes. While you're there at shieldyourbody.com, you can check out our world-class catalog of laboratory-tested EMF and 5G protection products. Don't forget to use promo code POD to save 15% on your first order from shieldyourbody.com with free shipping throughout North America and Europe. Until next time, I'm R Blank, and I want to thank you so much for tuning into the Healthier Tech Podcast. Always remember to shield your body.